It's really useful to imagine the particles and their collisions with the container as you're discussing gas pressure. Pressure varies with volume inversely. So there's three ways to remember this exact same rule. And you do get given the equation as it is at the top there. Pressure times volume equals a constant. You could also remember it on this graph here. And this graph shows inverse proportionality. If you double the pressure, you half the volume. That's what this graph shows. You could also use this as the little equation there, P1V1 equals P2V2. And that states that the pressure times volume before a change equals the pressure times volume after a change. So pressure times volume, a fixed mass of gas at constant temperature, equals a constant. So once you make a change of that fixed mass of gas at a constant temperature, it equals the same constant. So pressure times volume 1 equals pressure times volume 2. Essentially, if they're going to ask you to do a calculation with this equation, then they're going to give you three out of those four things and ask you to calculate the fourth one, the one unknown. You can imagine this with the particle picture like this. If you have a high volume, then there's more space there. And so there's going to be less frequent collisions of the gas particles with the container. So it's going to be a lower pressure. If you have a lower volume and those arrows are all the same length, so those particles have the same average kinetic energy, now there is going to be more frequent collisions with that container. So that corresponds to a higher pressure. And when you compress or expand the gas, therefore, its pressure changes. Higher pressure means a higher net force at right angles to the container. Remember, that's our equation. That's our definition of pressure, which is pressure is force over area. And if you have a fixed mass of gas at a constant temperature, if you increase the volume, the pressure is less. The pressure decreases. If the volume decreases, though, the pressure increases. And this is all about that frequency of particle collisions with the container. There are going to be more frequent collisions of the particles with the container if the volume is smaller. So remember, with this, you do need to treat this mathematically. You do need to be able to apply the idea that pressure times volume is a constant. You can either work out that constant and then use that constant to work out an unknown, or you can use the shorter method of that pressure 1 times volume 1 equals pressure 2 times volume 2 and input the numbers, work out the unknown. That's my pro tip there.